Oh, hey man, what's up? Hey man, what do you uh, got going on over there? Oh yeah, I'm just checking out this uh, Winning on Threads masterclass for churches. Weren't you just telling me that you're super busy right now? Yeah, I am always busy because stuff like this keeps coming up. It sounds like you don't have a clear sense as to why we're communicating where. Is that fair? Why? Well, I, I don't know what you mean. Hey, you good if I show you something real quick? I, if you think you got a better way, I mean, help me out. So this is what you're gonna do. If you don't have a plan when it comes to why you communicate what you communicate as an organization, as a church. We're gonna start real simple here, but we're gonna do it together. So get a piece of paper, write it down. The first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna identify who are the people on the inside of your organization. Inside matters a lot. This is internal communication. And then you're gonna list external. This is the stuff that's public facing. These are the people who aren't a part of your church. So inside we're thinking congregation, people who serve, uh, people who are very connected to the ministry, regular attenders, things like that. There's a lot of different options that we have when it comes to communicating to this group of people. There are uh, things like email, that's a real popular one. Ask for their email and communicate with them on a regular basis about the things that are going on. Another one that is a hot button issue, the bulletin. Some people have a physical printed bulletin, some people have an app. Either way, those are viable options. Some churches have a call tree, some churches have, you know, there's all sorts of different methodologies. What it is doesn't really matter as much as who are you communicating to and what is the channel that you're leaning on. So define it for inside. Then for outside, where are these people? Where are the people that you think you're gonna be able to reach? Where are they spending their time and in investing? As a local church, the filter here should be proximity. Where are the people in your local area spending their time? Facebook, a real popular one. The reason it's popular is because more people are on Facebook than any other social media platform. You can say that it's dying and fizzling out as much as you want. The facts are Facebook still has more users than anybody else. Next is Instagram. Great option if visuals are something that you want to be producing or videos. There's other things, there's TikTok, there's, I mean, Snapchat, I guess, if you really wanted to. But what you wanna do is you wanna define what are the ways that we're gonna be communicating, and then, this is the key, for what period of time. I am a big, big fan of 90 days. Focus your efforts on this plan for 90 days. At the 90 day mark, evaluate what worked, what didn't. If it worked, keep doing it. If something didn't work, you can get rid of it. You can eliminate it from your to-do list, or you can say, how do we retool this? The reason this is important is because threads is actually a distraction. A lot of us in church communications are stretched too thin. And when we have something like a communication plan, even if it's something as simple as the one that we just built together, operating it for 90 days is going to be the key to uncovering more margin in your schedule and in your day. I say that because I look at what's happening with Threads right now. It may be an incredible platform and it may be a great place for churches to invest. We just don't know that yet. So unless you have the margin to be able to innovate and develop a new strategy around a new platform, it doesn't make sense to disrupt what's already working in your church. And even if what you're doing right now doesn't lead to success, you're gonna know because you've given it a good shot. That's why 90 days is that period of time that I recommend churches invest in their plan. Operate the plan, run it for 90, see what happens.